So today is August the 1st, it's Templars Day in Switzerland, uh, 2014. They all have their flags out everywhere, like here, you know, you can see the bear, like in black water, or, you know, the, the revelations of John, everywhere flags. Um, and they celebrate the uh, domination over mankind, the conquest of the world, actually. Uh, as I already told you, that uh, in 1291, the year of the last Crusades, they, uh, only two and a half months later, they found that Switzerland on August the 1st. There's going to be a lot of fireworks, and I think already yesterday, so everywhere I look there are flags, the, temp the simplified Templars flags, like on the Swiss Army knife. Uh, flags everywhere. I, w I would have liked to, to go out and do some more videotaping, but uh, it's too dangerous. I can't do it, because of the murder threats by the police. And uh, we're all a bunch of Nazis here. So if I'm just looking, you know, from the balcony, uh, there's flags everywhere. There's another one. I, th I think this is the uh, the mercenary flag of Bern. With these, uh, it looks like the Japanese uh, bonsai flag with you know with the sun in the middle. Well, I mean the uh, the Japanese emperors, you know, they're they're not really Japanese. I mean they're a bunch of pharaohs as well, you know. So August the first. 2014 and because of this we thank two world wars the 30-year war and all of that all these wars so that's more than 700 years ago and this is the reason this is their base so I'm sorry for not taping a bit more I would have liked to do it but it's far too dangerous as an immigrant as a foreigner they just want to lie things together as they already did 17 years of terror and uh, uh, well they just lied things together to put an immigrant in prison here so but this is not what I wanted to talk about I wanted to talk about Joseph Mengele who was hiding in Switzerland before and after the war and uh, it's all Swiss base. It all relates to Switzerland, always and everywhere. All crimes against humanity. Uh, due to the complexity of this video here and all the proofs, I'll um, I'll show the images first in the beginning, and uh, so it has a, a faster flow as well. And I show you the proofs and all the sites and the information at the end of the video. This year, 2014, Joseph Mengele's official Italian passport and the name of Gregor Helmut from the town of Termini in Italy has turned up again in the US in the hands of its actual owner, Craig Gottlieb. And with this pass, he could escape to South America and come back to Europe, visiting relatives, seeing other Nazis from the motherland, and base of all evil, Switzerland, like Swiss General Ulrich Wille Jr., who financed Hitler and the Nazis, enjoying fantastic ski holidays in Switzerland, and seeing his son in a Swiss elite private school, and he also used Swiss Red Cross passports under various names like Fritz Hollmann, Peter Hochbichler, Dr. Merck and others. Fantastic! What a great country Switzerland is for Nazis and crimes against humanity. We all know that Joseph Mengele was the camp doctor of the extermination camp of Auschwitz responsible for the death and torture on 400,000 Jews and many more other peoples and gruesome experiments on children like punching needles into children's eyes without anesthetic just to see them suffer 
and Mengele has become the equivalent for an inhuman alien sort of monster, period. Mengele, by the way, stood under direct orders of Himmler, the head of the SS, but also of another Swiss compatriot of his, the, the SS general and Reichsminister Leonardo Conti from Switzerland, also called the Swiss sadist. See my film about him. And yes, I will prove to you here that Joseph Mengele was a fifth column Swiss sleeper agent of octagon of pure Swiss ancestry waiting his time to strike. Well, let's go and do some serious digging. Mengele was born in 1911 in the ancient town of Gunzburg in the south of Germany and not very far from the Swiss border where there has been a Roman Empire connection since 77 AD. Officially Gunzburg lies in Bavaria but its ethnicity is rather Alemannic, just as the Swiss tribal roots, as it lies right at the border of the Alemannic Bundesland of Baden-Württemberg. Plus, the Alemannic attacks in 260 AD and 506 during the Dark Ages, and consequently the murder of 70% of its population by the Swiss mercenaries in the Thirty Year War from 1618 to 1648 where without any doubt those 30% who were spared were of Alemannic descent as well. And one year before in 1617 all Jews were kicked out of Gunzburg where the Jewish name Gansburg, Ginsburg, etc. comes from only they didn't have the town anymore. So Dr. Mengele grew up in a town not far from Switzerland of a fifth column of Swiss sleeper agent and 100% Alemannic as in Switzerland. Thus laying the foundations for Mengele's visits in the motherland after the war. All the help from Switzerland, his son Rolf being able to go to school in Switzerland after the war and for the actual plans of today's Swiss Nazis to bring the ethnic Swiss around the borders home in the Reich, Heim ins Reich. And a very dangerous Swiss Nazi informed me about their plans personally. And I think it's even in the web. Well, here it is. So that would be south of Germany, the east of France, and the north of Italy, who are, by the way, for that very same reason, the richest parts of those countries. Yeah, and there will also be a big chunk of Austria, which is called Vorarlberg, which they want to uh, put into the, uh, the big Switzerland. The south of Germany is far richer than the rest. The east of France has a much better economy. And the north of Italy is comparably an entirely different country than the south, which the northern Italians even call Africa. And this is because all those ethnic Swiss dominions got finer financial help after the war through what the Nazis had pillaged in Europe and brought to the base in the Alps. This is the result of what the Germans call Das Wirtschaftswunder, only made possible through the murder of all those Jews and the Nazi robbery on Europe. So everywhere where it's blue, like all this, this is Alemannic. It's, all, it's going all the way to the south, even further down here and further up here. And here's Gunzburg, where Mengele is from, which is Alemannic. It's even in the web today. It falls under the um, uh, Bundesland of ba Bavaria, yeah, Bayern, but it's not. Its ethnic ethnicity is Alemannic, it's Swiss. This is all Swiss here. Gunzburg. It's Alemannic and it's Swiss. And these are their plans. Well, the Auschwitz warehouse and piles of stolen belongings in the extermination camps gave the name to the Bilderberger or mountains of pictures by that Prince of Darkness in my other videos on that. 
And the name of that place, of those mountains of shoes, glasses, hair, suitcases, clothes, and pictures of all those who were exterminated, was called Canada, which has been an insider Nazi joke that not many people outside of Switzerland know and understand. In Canada and the north of the Americas there are not so many people and when the Nazi Templars came there they said in German Keine da, which especially in the southern accent that Mengele spoke is pronounced like Canada and sounds like the name of the land Canada. And now comes the real joke the Swiss Nazis appreciate so much that in fact concerning all those mountains of belongings and none of their owners were still there, Canada or Canada. And to my surprise, this great Swiss-German joke could even be found in the internet and in Google. If you Google like this here, it, it pops out. Fantastic, isn't it? And this is the explanation of how that incoherent name, Canada, found its way in Pharaoh's extermination camp. From what I heard from insider sources, it was the angel of death himself who came up with the name and apparently he and the Swiss had numerous laugh outbreaks about it during his fantastic ski holidays in Switzerland after the war. And Auschwitz angel of death, his nickname in rea reality, went skiing in Engelsberg, or Mountain of the Angels, and he slept in Hotel Angel, seeing his son Rolf there. The rest of the family, his wife and mistress. What a splendid time in clean snowy Switzerland, so lovely. For a man being seen ripping a baby out of a pregnant woman's womb and throw it in into the ovens alive, because he was so upset. It wasn't any twins. Mengele also went visiting his son in Montreux, who attended a Swiss boarding school for the world's elite and Swiss sleeper agent community who felt the need for a decent education in the motherland, like that Korean dictator and all the others. The Monte Rosa Institute, as in Rosicrucian, or the town of Rose, Roses of Khodorkovsky's Rappersville, with a, with a Reich's eagle in its logo, together with four crescent moons, a Templar's cross and the slogan In Labora Virtus, which carries the same sense as the entrance of his father's concentration camp, Arbeit macht frei, where it's definitely not the elite, doing the work. So this is on a Russian website of the and for the oligarchs as you can see with the Russian letters here where most probably uh, Khodorkovsky's uh, children go, are going to school as well as he's living in Rappersville, the, the town of roses. There's another rose here. So this is for the oligarchs in Switzerland. Well of course they're all Swiss sleep agents. They all go to Swiss elite schools. And Mengele's son, Rolf, in 2008, this spoiled brat of the elite, being a lawyer at the time, and knowing perfectly well how, as any elite's lawyer, how to play and twist the words carefully, selected to manipulate another man's mind, asked forgiveness to Israel for his father's works. Well... Bad habits die hard in certain circles and super rich families. I, I suppose by that time the Mengele son had already required his Swiss passport. Forgiveness and justice are two opposite things, where forgiveness is for errors and justice for deliberately committed crimes. And he, who in this case forgives, abandons the cause of justice. By the way, why would a convinced Germany-loving Nazi as Mengele put his child in an expensive Swiss boarding school and not in his 
so-called beloved Germany. Huh. Well, because Mengele belonged to the Swiss sleeper agents who wanted to destroy Germany, only pretending to love the German people and that Aryan fairy tales in order to mobilize the Germans, just as Mr. Putin is doing right now with the Russians. There are hundreds of these type of schools in Switzerland, all with a coat of arms like this. It's all the aristocracy and half an octagon because the pupils are not ready yet. So they're not entirely octagon yet, but they're working on it in this school. And that's what they mean. The rosy, you know, like the Rosicrucians. Elite Swiss boarding schools are for that pharaonic world's elite of worldwide Swiss sleeper agents only, so their offspring stays connected with the motherland and base of all evil. And then of course go back into the world and ask for forgiveness, because it's better for business as the Mangala family is an extremely rich family that's already made one million Reichsmark annually in 1930, then two and a half 250 million D marks after the war, and now half a billion euros profit a year producing wagon loaders for farmers all over the world. So these are the top 10 boarding schools. Hey, look, Swiss America trading pops out automatically. The one, uh, the one you know, uh, Bill Cooper went to bed with, and probably, well, the ones who, uh, who killed him finally. So, you know, it says uh, a lot of kings, the school of kings, uh, for $100,000 a year. The second one is also in Switzerland. They're all in Switzerland. All the boarding schools. And this one too, it has served children of the European royalty and other famous people. Well, that's Switzerland, eh? And Mengele son. I guess in Europe every farmer has at least one trailer of the Mengele multi-million dollar business just as Mengele's medical experiments in Auschwitz are business and big-time money and one of the reasons for his extended stay in Switzerland after the war while working with the Swiss chemical plants of Basel analyzing his wartime files on heredity biology did the Mengele son give a few wagon loaders to the Israeli kibbutz farmers together with his apology to make it more real? Well, I guess not, eh? They were just sly, empty lawyers' words in the mainstream media, so nobody will blame the bloodline, being the lineage and Swiss neutrality swindle so important for that spoiled brat lawyer from a Swiss elite school. Nobody should grasp the idea of holding the bloodline responsible. So they won't ever do so they won't ever do it again to humanity. But their objectives are others, they are doing it again. And therefore the Mengele son had to make a false trail, so no one will blame and follow the bloodline trail. Old Mangala pin badges are now sold on eBay with three pillars on it for IHS, Isis, Horus and Seth, of the Pharaohs and the Horus Matrix. The name Mengele is Alemannic and not Bavarian, as Gunsborg rather is in Baden-Württemberg than Bavaria, at least ethnically, ethnic, ethnically seen. So the Bavarians really don't have anything to do in this. The prefix Le, in Alemannic, is the German diminutive for Lein in German, or Li in Swiss German, as in Mengele, you know, Mengelein, it would be Mengelein in High German. Menge means a lot, together, altogether a small lot, referring to that fifth column of Swiss sleeper agents who are both few and many. Few in quantity, but many in force. Few in the beginning and finally taking over in the end. The very reason for those French and Italian speaking parts inside Switzerland already the finalized, finalized status quo 
of their Swiss virus. The equal plans to incorporate those European border parts into the virus are now happening inside the US as well. The name Mengele withholds the essence of that sneaky Swiss virus and carries the encoded inhibition just as Canada, Canada, Bilderberg or Suisse, Sir Disease, Switzerland, the sisters of Isis. The Jews said to themselves that the Germans would never do any harm to them because they are people of poets writers, philosophers and Nobel Prize winners? So far right, only one problem, the Swiss aren't. I discovered two main types of the Swiss species. The sly, polite type appearing as a helpful gentleman but extremely cold and ruthless to the core, just as Mengele, who was called the aristocrat, like a Swiss criminal banker or the Swiss diplomatic corps who want to bitch us into that neutrality swindle psyop projection and then there's the more blunt mercenary type commonly found on the Swiss countryside and their Heidi counterparts are plain witches who fully control their male creation of the Horus matrix and know a hell of a lot more than they tell us those sisters of Isis just as Mengele's second wife, Martha, his mistresses, the Swiss she-males around Hitler, financer Ulrich Wille, etc., etc. They were all in it, a close society under the laws of the Swiss Omerta, smiling through their teeth. And among today's Nazis, and Nazis in general, there are the same two types as in Swiss society the blunt neo-Nazi mercenary type and the sly Swiss gentleman-like and far more dangerous typers of the elitist Burschenschaft and actually gaining enormous influence under the radar an extremely dangerous development abiding the laws of the Nazi Omerta the laws of silence Anyway, the word Führer sounds like Pharaoh, quite a bit suspicious. The slogan of the elite Burschenschaft is, is Ehre, Freiheit und Vaterland, meaning honor, freedom and fatherland. And well, the aristocracy, the aristocracy's elite have never been running around with their arms raised and even if it says here like German cities and Austria, well remember that a large part, a large part of Germany and Austria, it's Alemannic and they want to go to Switzerland. It has been documented that Mengele went skiing in Switzerland in 1956 and that on March 4th, 1961, a German journalist had informed the Zurich police of the exact address of the Schwimmbadstraße 9 in Kloten, near Zurich, where the angel of death stayed in an apartment rented by his second wife, Martha. The Swiss police then even followed him, but turned a blind eye, as the Swiss police always had and always will protect Nazis as they are convinced Nazis themselves. Then on March 5th the Swiss police contacted the German police for an international arrest warrant who only responded days later on March 7 saying there was no arrest warrant. Well the whole world knew that there was an award of two million three hundred seventy five thousand dollars on Mengele's head. But on the other side of the dip, Swiss sleeper agent Gay Edgar Hoover was consequently putting all the files of Annie Mengele, Bormann and Hitler sightings in a very dark and deep safe to be never seen nor heard of again. It says in German in red that the precision parts, they were made in Switzerland, which is true. 
and the same is for the uh, the German U-boat torpedoes. All the procession parts and the uh, for the ignition and all that it was it was Swiss. Well, they they're well known for precision stuff, yeah. Except when it's about like arresting any Nazis, then there's no precision at all, it seems. And consequently, the Swiss Nazi police successfully stalled time until more than six months later on September 15th, 1961, announcing that the German police finally acknowledged the international arrest warrant for Mengele. And in fact, the Swiss Nazi police in reality don't care at all about any official ways, international laws or universal justice or a legal base. When they want to arrest someone, they'll just do it and lie something together to make it hold and in tight collaboration with the Swiss Nazi Justice Department. And nothing has changed until this very day concerning the Nazi practices of the Swiss Gestapo. While at the very same time and era the Swiss rounded up tens of thousands of gypsies also without any moral scruples or any or on any legal base and they took away their children put them with the rest of the Ferdinkinder children slaves and they never saw their parents again and the Nazi Swiss sterilized all the gypsy women by force now wait a minute wasn't Mengele the head doctor of gypsy affairs as well in Auschwitz doing for sterilization experiments on gypsies, Jews and others. And now the Swiss were doing it with Mengele in the area. Well, you all got it. The Swiss Nazi police who were rounding up tens of thousands of gypsy children at the moment needed Mengele for his experience with gypsies in the given circumstances and his extended know-how on forced and cheap sterilizations as only Swiss sleeper agents may multiply, and not the others, and most certainly not in their upo Nazi utopia in the Alps. So Mengele worked together with the racial hygienics leader of Switzerland, Dr. Alfred Siegfried, of the Swiss eugenics program, and who had even visited the Nazi concentration camps during the war. Well, it says, Dr. Siegfried is walking with some gypsy children and going to sterilize them all instead of, uh, on no legal base at all, instead of, you know, arresting Mr. Mr. Mengele. <laughs> so here you can see a picture of uh, Dr. Uh, Alfred Siegfried with a Hitler's moustache with whom uh, Mengele worked together after the war in a uh, eugenics program sterilizing uh, the gypsies. And Mengele collaborated with his old pal, General Ulrich Wille, as well. Uh, Ulrich Wille Jr., the financer of Adolf Hitler, a close friend of Rudolf Hess, Himmler and Goebbels, and who had founded after the war the Pro Juventute Youth Authorities to better get hold of the children and randomly arrest any youth and keep them in high security prison without trial for long periods of time, up to many years, while sterilizing them and doing other criminal abuses. They officially call these victims administrative versorgte, or in English, administ administratively uh, stashed away, being the official terminology given by the Swiss Nazi authorities, a thing they could have easily done with Mengele, but instead did that with defenseless, mostly underage children in that very same period. The whole world was looking for Mengele. The Swiss has always lied to the whole world in the horrible Nazi utopia in the Alps while Joseph Mengele spent most of his post-war years in exile in Switzerland while going on holidays to the US to see Werner von Braun who also worked in concentration camps using its slave labor meeting Hitler in Argentina and going to Brazil and Paraguay 
After his work with the Swiss sterilizing gypsy children and others, Mengele started working with the huge Basel chemical industry to evaluate the fruits and files of his medical experiments in Auschwitz, making money for the Swiss pharmaceutical industries based upon his field of work in heredity bio biology and eugenics, which he already started for the SS in 1937 as an assistant under Freiherr Ottmar von Verschur of the aristocracy, whom you can see here. And this guy here of the aristocracy, he peacefully died in 1969. No problem. The Swiss continued Mengele's work of heredity biology together with Dr. Death, or Walter Basson, of South Africa and Operation Coast to invent a biological hereditary bomb which, will, which would kill all black Africans only. And now, having inserted a mutated form of Ebola in Africa that has been genetically transformed by the Swiss and their Mengele legacy, possibly with an in inhibited mutant potential to owe to airborne itself, so this new Ebola can spread through the air and all over. The mother of the eugenics Hitler financer, General Ulrich Wille Jr., was Clara Gräfin von Bismarck, a countess of the higher aristocracy, and they even received visits of the German emperor Wilhelm II, William II, that aristocratic warmonger who started World War I and later on, Rudolf Hess came for dinner from 1922 on, at least once a week, in the estate in Horgen, near Rapperswil, where Khodorkovsky lives. The pharaohs of the aristocracy are, are all over it and wanted the Jews exterminated once and for all. The final solution. Mengele had nothing to fear when he visited his father's funeral in Gunzburg in 1959, and I wonder how many dead bodies have been transported on the Mengele wagons. And Ulrich Wille also died in 1959. Well, what a busy year that was for Mengele. So here you can see there's a very interesting video on the, uh, on the Swiss State's um, YouTube channel, Bundesarchiv of the visit of uh, William II, the Emperor of Germany, with a, a Templar's cross on his breast, an octagon on his head, and he's smiling, uh, making some good business with the Swissies. Look here, and probably here, and the army guys behind it. So this was in in 1912, at the end of 1912, and not only, not only two years after the World War I broke out. Uh, here they were um, organizing World War, World War I with the Swiss, no doubt about it. So the German Emperor in Burr 1912, here sticking his finger in his, up his nose, he's, um, he personally visited Ulrich Wille Jr., well first his father of course, and uh, who was the Hitler financer, you know, it's, they're all linked, you see. This warmonger, he visited the father of the other warmonger, and they finance Hitler, and the aristocracy is all over it. It's all linked, and it's always linked to Switzerland. Look at this Swissy here, next to the Emperor here. I don't think he's laughing because the Emperor sticks his finger in his nose. He's just happy because he made some good business. Probably one of those Swiss banksters. See, he's having a brilliant time, eh? Two world wars coming up. Nice. Thank you, Switzerland. And within and around this Swiss conquest over humanity and the entire Earth, all these agitators look so normal. 
as if another species had some memory implant of how and when behave human and even cry at times about their own minor sorrows only, of course. Of course in total self-pity but without any remorse. Like some memory implant holding the information of what a real human being should look like when needed for manipulative charms and knowing by the imprint what a human being wants to hear with their shallow creepy smiles like Khodorkovsky, Mengele, Himmler and the rest of the Swiss species trying desperately to look so innocent, neutral and human for the eyes of the real humanity. What are they really? What did the Swiss cold species? Where did the Swiss cold species come from before ancient Egypt and the pharaohs? Mengele died in 1979. Hitler in 1962, Argentina, and Alfred, Dr. Alfred Siegfried in 1972, all protected by the Templars, World Wide Web of Freemasonry, and Swiss sleeper agents on all key positions in the world. And some official requests concerning Mengele were made in Swiss Parliament in 1999, replying that all files were sealed until 2009 which has been five years now, and nobody has had a look so far. Well, why would you, if you can gossip in your cell phone for most of the goddamn day with all our senses drowned in all their presence, seemingly from another world? Well, the authorities are arming up and the Swiss Nazi utopia is having a Stasi network for anyone who wants to rat out his neighbor, friend or relative, for which the Swiss Nazi police is paying eight million dollars a year. Oh yeah. Well, except of course when the tango is called Mengele, then. Well, what is there to say more? So here's some information from 1999 uh, from the uh, Swiss Parliament, the official documents uh, about m the Swiss knowing where Mengele was at and that they protected him. They stole time like six months, six months, you know, in 1961. They, they just protected him, you know, from the whole, his whole time in Switzerland. And... Uh, well, this is done by a pro, pro forma leftish guy in the parliament. There are no, and there aren't any left wing people really in Swiss parliament. They're just pretending. Uh, what we can see here, nothing really happened. Now we are uh, 15 years later, and nothing has happened. So it's all, it's all a joke. You know, they're all lying. they they're, they're just pretenders. All, all so-called left-wingers in Switzerland, they all have the same right-wing ideas. They're just pretending to the world that they that they are the same as anywhere else. But it's uh, it, it's all homogeneous, you know. It's it's they're all the same. So here's an article in German. I'll give you some articles in English as well about this guy here, Ulrich General Ulrich Wille Jr. And in the same family, his father was married with uh, Clara Gräfin von Bismarck. It's the high, the, the German high aristocracy. They had a personal visit in 1912, probably in Hagen, where they also um, received uh, Herm, um, uh, Rudolf Hess, who came eating like once a week from 1922 on because he studied in Zurich. See my other videos. And uh, the German Emperor, the, this warmonger, came and visited them. Uh, not even two years later, there was a uh, the First World War broke out, and it's all connected to this family here and to the Swiss. It's not only this guy here, but he was just chosen to do the uh, the connections, you know, and and um, 
later on he financed Switzerland junior here and uh, just right after the um, the Second World War started so twice the First World War he got a visit by the Emperor then it started the Second World War he visited Switzerland and the Second World War started it's all from Switzerland they always got their dirty little fingers in it and this family received both warmongers from the First and the Second World War well, what do you know I mean these are the ones behind it wakey wakey so this is very interesting here I'll give you some more so this is page one uh, I put in the link for you so you can read it yourself. It's in uh, Die Beobachter, a, um, a Swiss magazine. But there's nobody doing anything here in this country, I'll, I'll tell you. So this is Wikipedia about Ulrich Wille Jr., the guy who, uh, who met uh, Adolf Hitler. And he had uh, Rudolf Hess, here it says Rudolf Hess, Adolf Hitler. He knew Himmler, Goebbels, uh, the whole lot of them. And he uh, set up, he uh, um, founded the, uh, well you see he's a, he's a lawyer, they all are lawyers, you know. Just like uh, Rolf Mengele, the son of um, the beast. So he um, founded Pro Juventute, you know. In 1912, well that's the same year the Emperor, the German Emperor, uh, came in uh, in Switzerland. It's all connected. Then they were getting bold and they knew, well, well we can do it now. And uh, so they could get a better hold of the children. And when uh, Mengele was there, and they met up, they all the time, they, they saw each other every day. They... Uh, they continued, you know, tens of thousands of gypsies to sterilize them, even Swiss children, uh, just for nothing, with no reason all, at all, no legal basis, nothing. There was no, no judge there in it, or, you know, they, they just did it. And in the meantime, the real criminal, like Mengele, they let him go. And the same thing is happening today, the, the Swiss Nazi police and the Nazi Justice Department to just lie a lot of things together to put an immigrant like me in prison. I've been doing this for 17 long years with me and my family. Here it says, Die Beobachter. That was a very interesting article from 2012. Well, that's exactly 100 years after the visit of uh, the German Emperor, Wilhelm II, that warmonger, you know, that cost the lives of 8 million people. And then uh, an, another, what was it, 50 million after when the, uh, the, the Spanish flu came in the world and, and it's all related. Uh, so this family, they're really extremely evil. And in Horgen, that's not very far, it's just around the corner from where Khodorkovsky is living. Yeah. Also with this, this creepy superficial smile on his face, they all have it. Like Mengele, like Himmler, a sort of a strange, funny Swiss smile. A diplomatic Swiss banker smile. You know, it's, it's not even a Japanese could do this, I tell you. So this is about the Burschenschaften, I already told you this. This is for the elite, the student Nazis of the, the, the Pharaonic class, the Swiss sleep agents and all that, who don't really want to... Uh, run around in town with a uh, without any hair like a fair of, of a member of the pharaonic army a soldier of the pharaonic army like as the uh, the neo nazis of the workers class who are completely misled i mean these are the real nazis the the guys in charge you know studying in the elite uh, swiss boarding schools you know and all that like the mengele son and uh, they're extremely dangerous, and they are they are on the way up at the moment, getting more and more influential. I think I already showed it to you, but maybe not the entire text. Well, here it is. And so this is for the Swiss sleep agents because they don't want to get known. They still want to do like uh, so they can say, "Well, I'm just a normal person." Otherwise, they couldn't do the real ravaging work in society anymore. You see. This is about Mengele's passport found again uh, this year. It says 2014 January. About this guy, uh, 
of this guy here in America. It should be very, very thoroughly analyzed, the passport, where he got it from, where the other one got it from, and, and fo follow back the whole line of, uh, of owners, of ownership. So there was this year, very important. It's hardly any news about it. So I'll put in the links for it, it's even on YouTube. Just punch it in and it will be on YouTube. Uh, this this is the Swiss connection. There's probably some Swiss stamps on it here. There, Swiss stamps. Uh, or maybe not. They don't even. They they wouldn't like to to leave any stamp on it. You see. Yeah, there's about Mengele's secret tribe. You know the Mengele factory. The um, uh, it's on uh, Mail Online. I put in the link for you. So just punch, punch, pause, and you can read that. All these people who helped him, of his family. You know, Swiss elite boarding schools, and nobody said a word, eh? Oh, oh, there's. This is about the Mangala business in uh, in Wikipedia. So these sort of things they're making all over the world. You find, I, I saw them everywhere, in Switzerland, in France, everywhere. It's an, a very big company, international, very, very rich. Uh, more than half a billion profit e every year, annually. And uh, well, they, they, they were backing up his, uh, their, their man, the angel of death. Mengele is one of them. You know, it's always connected with big, huge money, Switzerland. And it is in the Alemannic part of, uh, of the south of Germany, not very far from the, uh, from the Swiss border. You know, that um, uh, Swiss Nazis want to incorporate into a big Switzerland, a Grand Switzerland, yeah. And this is Gunzburg, where he's from. You see, here's Switzerland, here. It's right next to the Swiss border. In Baden-Württemberg, here. Well, it's part, it says Bavaria, but it's, you know, the Alemannic goes all the way to here. It's all Alemannic, this here and this here, which I showed on the other maps. Uh, yeah, th this is the, the richest part of Germany. Here, all the big cars are here. Stuttgart, there is uh, Ingolstadt for Audi, Stuttgart Porsche, and I think uh, VW, and then uh, well, it's, it's the richest part. And then this big, huge company. There's probably some more interesting things to find in it, but uh, oh yeah, well, you, you just find it yourself. You know, Siemens, also in Gunzburg. Uh, giving f food for McDonald's. Meat. Well, this is the Nazi lineage of the pharaohs and the Swiss sleep agents. Switzerland always have their dirty little fingers in it. This here is a Templar's cake, being served on Templar's Day in Switzerland on August the 1st, every year. This is in 2014. And well, we all know Adolf Hitler, he loved cookies and cakes with coffee or tea as he was a vegetarian. On some days it was the only thing he ate. So I wonder how many of these he devoured. And uh, how many of these Mr. Mengele ate during the long extended visits in Switzerland where he spent most of his time actually um, post World War time. Anybody fancies a Templar's cake? Or would you rather prefer the pyramid cake as from Switzerland as I filmed before? Eh? Oh, that's the sting of a Swiss parasite. Sucking on the world.
slowly dying. Still moving his legs, but they are slowly dying. It's finished. They're finished. Your time is up, Swissy. Look, there's a sting. Stinging my leg, sucking my blood for 17 years. Why do you do that? You Swiss parasite. Hey, you Swiss parasite, you want to sting me? Take my blood? Well, look what happens to you. You Swiss parasite. Well, there's a horsefly. Stung me. All coming out of the forest, or you Swiss parasite. Look, that what's happening to you. You criminal. Look, it's still moving. Look at it. That's it's the end. Your time is up. Your time is up, Swissy, you crawling parasite. You won't be flying anymore soon. We all know what you're doing. No more Swiss Nazi banks. No more killings. No more Adolf Hitler. No more Zeb Blatters. No more FIFA, you criminal Nazis. You're gonna crawl. You scum. You won't be flying anymore. That's it. It looks so nice and clean, but it isn't. I tell you, it isn't. <laughs>